Our penultimate speaker is a grade 12 student passionate about debating who has represented Canada at the Oxford University International Debating Championship and is representing Alberta at numerous national championships. Please welcome Asher Nyoff. All right. Full disclosure, like Maggie, I'm a bit under the weather, but this reminds me of a story my dad told me the night before a provincial debate tournament. He says, Asher, you gotta stay up late sometimes and wake up the next morning and give the best presentation of your life. That tournament, we won first place, allowing us to compete at nationals, so let's hope it goes the same way. <laughs> All right, let's hit it. President Obama, when news of debate first came about, my mom suggested that I give it a try because, hey, President Obama did, and look where he ended up. Now, I know my good pal Carl was a young Republican. I was a young Democrat, so that really sold me, and it's made all the difference in the end. Now, I was in grade five, uh, 11 years old with a Justin Bieber haircut, and I, I gave it a try. Uh, I can say, though, that the day before the tournament, I went to my coach and I told her that I wanted to back out. I was too nervous. But hey, at the end of the day, ended up with first team and first speaker, so a pretty good start. Um, in terms of what debate actually looks like, because I know it's hard to kind of see what it would be like, uh, you know, if it's on TV, if it's a political debate, it looks a little something like this, where you're on a team of people, you're given a random topic, you're given a random side. You may be propositioned for uh, the motion or against it, and then you're given 15 minutes to prepare and then go. You have to give an eight minute speech on something you may have no idea about which is very nerve-wracking and sometimes. Now, the reason there's pictures of zoo animals up here is because one of the first topics that young debaters usually get is this house would ban zoos. It's a bit of a meme in the debate community. But then you see, as you learn these fundamental skills about how to make a case effectively and how to rationalize an argument, you move on to more complex to topics, talking about economics, about government, about the legal system, about social justice. So also this uh, presentation is chock full of great funny photos of me from back in the day. Uh, here I was in about grade six with my partner Lucas and debate at this time to me was really a chance to go to an activity after school, wear a suit, pretend I was an adult and get free pizza, maybe a medal or two if we spoke well enough. Um, but moreover, as we got more into it, uh, we ended up being able to compete at more high level tournaments, at provincial tournaments, and even win a chance uh, to go to nationals, where it really exposed us to the way in which debate can be uh, a way in which to learn more about the world and to learn some uh, skills in terms of critical thinking, and which came in really helpful for English and social studies essays throughout the years. Um, as you can see here, I wasn't in grade six or seven, but this was last year. And I actually grew up debating with these guys. The Shane, Aaron, Kevin. Uh, we met each other when we were grade five, six, seven, and this is us in grade 11. And it really shows that debate has become one of like the closest communities for me in terms of a friend group. Um, and this is me actually at Oxford University, which is what I want, really want to focus on. Uh, we won the chance to actually attend the international competition at Oxford University, given that we placed first in the provincial uh, competition in Alberta, and we final, were finalists at the national competition for British parliamentary style. There were teams from Africa, the Netherlands, Canada, and the UK, and it was a fantastic opportunity to debate with some of the top talents around the world. It was a challenge getting there, given that we arrived pretty much in the middle of the night, Calgary time and had to find a train to Oxford, but I can't say it wasn't a challenge that we enjoyed thoroughly. Um, in terms of the Oxford Union itself, it's pretty much the world's paramount debating society. It's hosted individuals from US presidents to British prime ministers, uh, to musicians from ASAP Rocky to Elton John to Michael Jackson. So debating in the space was an incredible experience for us. In terms of the topics or what we actually had to contend with, we had to talk about, and keep in mind that we were given 15 minutes to prepare on a side that we may or may not agree on, about the sale of human organs, about prohibiting leaders of terrorist organizations from running for public office, about mandating that former colonial powers establish immigration quotas from their former colonies. 15 minutes for an eight minute speech on this. It's a lot of fun, it gives you an adrenaline rush and it kind of reminds me about what I'm doing here today. We also got some great Instagram photos, as you can see. <laughs> but this is the United Nations here and I wanna switch the focus of my talk to a little bit more about how debate can actually be a caveat for change and help develop the next generation of leaders. Because you're not only uh, the substance of what you're talking about or your points or your ideas, but it's also about how you effectively present them. So interestingly, I've found that dealing with polarized issues in debate where you're given a very black or white solution has actually forced me to look at the middle ground of issues in a climate that's so polarized like what my friend Carl talked about. 
especially in an era of political apathy, where politics is confusing, it's controversial, it's increasingly boiled down to polarized wedge, wedge issues, it's harder and harder to come to reasonable solutions especially in the age of AI. And I think coming from the Generation Z, where there's an increasing sense of nihilism, given the 2008 economic crash, given the election of Donald Trump and other populist leaders, given artificial intelligence, where people are legitimately concerned about whether or not robots are taking our jobs, debate forces you to talk about these big issues. We have debated about whether or not we should support artificial intelligence, whether or not biotechnology and gene editing should be supported. Should we restrict free speech in the face of fake news and the rise of right-wing populism? These are all real debate topics that have been forced to contend with at a very young age, and many more people in the Calgary community and across the world have also had to. And I think this gives you a very important perspective, uh, in addition to really funny photos like this one. <laughs> so that's Carl as well. And you know, as you can see, I didn't really think of debate as this serious thing when I was in grade seven here, having a great time dressing up in a suit on a weekend. But I do think that um, <laughs> It's, it's, uh, it's, it's given me the skills to be able to present effectively. Uh, here's the city dad, as Jason called him, Mayor Nenshi. I'm on the Calgary Mayor's Youth Council. And joining in grade nine, I was frankly pretty nervous having to present ideas about what the Mayor's Youth Council was doing to Mayor Nenshi. But debate gave me the confidence to be able to present in front of the council, um, knowing how to organize my thoughts, knowing how to present my evidence and carry out a confident conversation. This is my older sister, Olivia. She has cerebral palsy and some cognitive special needs as well. And I think that looking forward to my future, I want to get into law and get into politics because of people like her and being exposed to the special needs community and using my privilege and my experience in debating where I know how to make a case for something, how do I use my voice and my confidence and my privilege to stand up for those who cannot? And I think that's a challenge for all of us in this room to apply to our daily lives in whatever case we can. The resounding message of next from this talk is that hearing these presentations today, it's very clear that there are many youth and many people in Calgary who have important things to say. And there's no doubt that there are many passionate, dedicated individuals who want to make a change in the world. So with that, if you know someone or you are someone who cares about the future of our planet, work on your public speaking, work on your critical thinking skills, give debate a try, because who knows where you might end up? Who knows the impact that debate or the skills that come along with it can actually do for the future of our world? Thank you.